Hello and welcome to TranslatorsCafe.com channel. In this video, we will talk about radiation. We will discuss its sources and uses, devices for its measurement and the effects of radiation on living creatures. We will talk in more detail about radiation dose and radiation dose rate. There are many uses for ionizing radiation, from energy generation to medical applications in a range of treatments, including treatments of cancer patients. Here we will discuss how ionizing radiation affects human and other biological material with a focus on the rate at which the tissue is irradiated. Radiation is a physical phenomenon of electromagnetic waves or subatomic particles with high kinetic energies propagating through media. This media could be either matter or vacuum. Radiation occurs in nature and is everywhere around us and we rely on it for our survival. For example, without radiation we would not have basic necessities for life such as light and heat. We would not have either mobile phones or the internet. In this video we will discuss a subset of radiation known as ionizing radiation, which is present in our environment. This radiation causes the electrons to separate from atoms and molecules, thus ionizing them. Ionizing radiation can be present in the environment due to natural causes or it could be artificially introduced into the environment by placing radioactive substances there. Natural sources of radiation include solar and cosmic radiation, some materials, for example granite, as well as radiation of some radioactive materials such as uranium and even common bananas, which contain radioactive potassium isotope. We mine some of these radioactive substances and use them as fuel, or in medicine and in some industries. Radioactive materials sometimes leak into the environment as a result of accidents. Often this is a result of improper handling or inadequate safety regulations at the facilities that work with radioactive minerals. It is important to note that until recently radiation was not considered dangerous, and radioactive materials have been used historically for their supposed health benefits, as well as for their decorative properties. Uranium glass is one example. It is glass with uranium oxide added to it. This glass fluoresces bright green in ultraviolet light. The amount of uranium is usually very small, and this glass is considered safe because it emits very low amount of radiation. As such, it is even used to make glasses, bowls and other items for serving food and drink. It is valued for its glow. Since solar light also has UV, uranium glass glows in sunlight as well, although the glow is not as pronounced as with a black light. As you saw, these uranium beads can be used to check working of Geiger counters. The beards are available on eBay for a couple of bucks. Let us consider some definitions first. Radiation can be measured in many different ways, depending on whether we want to know the total amount of radiation in the environment, the amount of radiation that affects biological tissue and cells, the amount of radiation that was absorbed by the object or body, and so on. Here we consider two ways of measuring radiation. The total amount of radiation that is in the environment per unit of time is the total ionizing dose rate. The amount of radiation absorbed by the body per a given unit of time is the absorbed dose rate. The absorbed dose rate is calculated by using data for the total ionizing radiation dose rate and the parameters of the body, body part or object being irradiated, including its mass, density and volume. The two values may be similar for materials that are highly absorbent, but this is often not the case. 
and absorbency differs greatly for materials. For example, a sheet of lead will absorb gamma radiation more readily than would a sheet of aluminum of the same thickness. It is known that a high dose of radiation, also called an acute dose, causes health risks, and the higher the dose, the greater these risks. We also know that radiation does not affect all cells equally. Cells that rapidly divide and cells that are not specialized are affected the most. In particular, cells in embryos as well as blood cells and reproductive tissue are the most sensitive. Skin, bone and muscle tissue are less sensitive and nerve cells are the least sensitive. Thus, if we have a higher dose acting upon less sensitive tissue, it may be less damaging than a lower dose acting upon more sensitive tissue. An interesting theory, known as radiation hermesis, suggests that small doses of radiation may have an opposite effect and stimulate defense mechanisms of the body. As a result, it is suggested that this makes the organism healthier than if this radiation was not present. It is important to note that this research is in its developmental stages right now, and that it is not known if this can be replicated in real life or if it will have the same effect on the human body as it does on laboratory animals. It is hard to conduct this research on human subjects for ethical reasons. Absorbed dose, also known as total ionizing dose TID is a measure of the energy deposited in a medium by ionizing radiation per unit mass. The SI unit of measure is joules per kilogram, which has a special name gray. The non-SI unit red is also used. The absorbed dose depends not only on the incident radiation, but also on the absorbing material. A soft X-ray beam may deposit four times more dose in bone than in air, or none at all in a vacuum. Equivalent dose, which represents the health effect of ionizing radiation on the human body, is measured in sieverts. To understand the difference between the dose and dose rate, consider the analogy of filling up a kettle from a water tap. The volume of water in the kettle is the dose and the rate of water flow measured in units of volume per units of time is the dose rate. The dose rate is measured in sieverts per unit time. For example, microsieverts per hour or millisieverts per year. Radiation is generally invisible, and the only way for humans to detect it is to use special measuring devices. Geiger counters are frequently used to measure radiation. A Geiger counter has a tube where the ionizing radioactive particles are counted. This count is then shown on the display in a range of units, generally as the amount of radiation per a given amount of time, such as per hour. Geiger counters instruments often make a clicking sound that indicates that a particle is emitted. The sound is optional and the user can usually set it to click per a given number of particles counted, for example, one click per every 20 particles. It is also possible to disable this function completely. In addition to Geiger counters, scintillation counters and proportional counters are used because they allow to determine which type of radiation is being measured more easily. Scintillation counters can detect alpha, beta and gamma radiation. They use a scintillator that converts the energy of the radioactive particles into light, hence the name of the counter. 
The light, in turn, is converted into an electrical signal in a sensitive photomultiplier and then measured. The area of detection is larger than for the Geiger counter, which allows for more efficient detection. Because of the very high energy capacity of ionizing radiation, it ionizes particles such as atoms and molecules within biological material. As a result of ionization, electrons are separated from the atoms and the molecules, and the structure of these molecules and atoms changes. This happens because ionization weakens or breaks chemical bonds. As a result, molecules within cells and tissues become damaged or dysfunctional. Sometimes new bonds may be created during this process. When the cells and tissue are thus affected by radiation, there are several possible outcomes. In some cases, the damage does not disrupt the cell's functioning. In other situations, the damage occurs but can be repaired. This is a natural process in all living cells that occurs frequently, and if the radiation dose or the dose rate is small, repair is possible. Another possibility is irreversible damage. If the damage to cells is irreversible, they either function differently from their intended mode or stop functioning and die. When radiation thus affects vital cells and molecules, such as molecules that oversee and control various processes in the cell, including proteins, enzymes, DNA and RNA, then radiation-induced illnesses occur. Damage to cells may also result in mutations, which cause genetically related diseases in the offspring. These mutations may also cause cells to divide abnormally fast which is a precondition for cancer. At present, our knowledge of the effects of radiation and conditions which worsen these effects is limited, because we have a small set of data to work with. Much of the research in this area relies on the case studies of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing survivors, as well as survivors of nuclear disasters such as the Chernobyl disaster. We should know that some of the research on the effects of radiation on the human body was done between 1950s and 1970s in an extremely unethical and inhumane manner. The work that we currently know of includes research in the facilities sanctioned by the military of the US and the Soviet Union governments. Much of this research was done in areas around the nuclear testing facilities, such as the Nevada test site in the USA, the testing grounds on Nova Zemlya, now a territory of Russia, and the Semipalatinsk test site, now in Kazakhstan. Some studies were also carried out as part of military exercises, for example, during the Totska nuclear exercise, the territory is now part of Russia, and the Desert Rock exercises in Nevada, USA. After detonating bombs that released radiation, researchers studied the effects of this radiation on the body. Some unethical human Experiments were also conducted on unconsented individuals from 1946 and until the 1960s in US hospitals. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.